National Insurance Clearinghouse, the marketing arm of Brokers Alliance presents a Bravo video event, the Business Insurance Zone, dedicated to financial professionals who use insurance in their practice. And on today's show, Charitable Giving 2012 with CPA Ken Davis. And now the host of the Business Insurance Zone, the Wiz of the Biz insurance columnist Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone to the Business Insurance Zone. We're broadcasting live to a nationwide network of financial advisors and professionals right here in Fountain Hills, Arizona, home of America's largest fountain. And of course, it's holiday here at Brokers Alliance. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, Kwanzaa, whatever you're into. I say I salute your happy holiday. And here's the reason why I like that. I want you to know that our carriers have been sending gifts to Steve Savant. I'm totally on that. Not only that, but they've also been sending food. I'm really in there. But I want to say I wear an XL, just in case. A little heads up. I wear an XL. For, keep those polo shirts coming in because I love it at the end of the year. People are just giving away their memorabilia. All these carriers got cool stuff. Oh, right? you're so mercenary. I, it is. We're mercenary here at the business insurance zone, and I'm taking it. And I want to introduce <laughs> day three. Hey, listen, if you haven't been here for the first two days, uh, you're probably sitting there going, I didn't even know what tax facts was. This is Ken. <laughs> <laughs> this, is my, this is my special guest, Ken Davis. Ken, welcome to the show. Hey, Stephen. I've known Ken for, what, 20 whatever years. Yeah. I mean, it's been long, and it's been brutal. <laughs> yeah, from, from, from my standpoint. Yeah, yes. I've really had to put torture. <laughs> Ken is a CLU, CHFC, CFP, and CPA. And I got to say, Ken, we've been talking about, and perfect for the season, charitable giving at the end of the year. But actually, what we're talking about, this show won't be quarantined to just end of the year. We'll have it out in our archive section because really what we're talking about can be done all year long. Well, in particular, our last segment, the charitable gift annuities, really has nothing to do with year end so much as right. it does an ongoing income for the donors. So. Yeah, so heads up, if you're looking for this, remember to go bow, out to our site. We'll have the five video series of these shows all this week. We'll have a whole brief, to kind of show that, that 2010, um, uh, what is that, the 2010 study of high net worth philanthropy. You'll want to be able to get this. We're going to have that all out there for you to download, including our own charitable giving brief, which has all the tactics and strategies and a lot of the things that Ken and I can't get on the air just too much, right? I mean, right. just stuff into right. our time. But today we're going to touch on some things and we're going to try to do this. This is a big fear. Now, now we kind of talk about the first two days are kind of like charitable giving with greed, which sounds like a conflict of interest mm -hmm. or counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. Today we're going to talk about something on the reverse, the big fear. Now, we touched on it a little Monday, Tuesday. But until you overcome this, you're not going to get this sale. Oh, that's right. And let's talk about it because we're talking about overcoming client fears in regards to running out of money. And this is what holds them back from gifting. So, Ken, we've learned, I mean, think about it. We're living in the age, of, well, maybe not the age of Methuselah, but the Guinness Book of World Records died, right, a couple years back at 121. That girl from France died at 121. I mean, the U.S set record was female also at 119 and the top 20 people that have lived the longest according to the guinness book of by the way they're all women no no surprise there right they're all women but but that's the thing that we're looking at now i just want to give a heads up because this is really true we have carriers now that are illustrating to age 131 on proposals oh my Think about what I just said. The maturity dates of contracts are all the way out to 121, and I have to give you another heads up. There are three carriers in the United States now that don't use numbers anymore. It just says, the life of the insured. I mean, is that bizarre? And I've heard, I've heard that they're thinking about actually doing an issue age contract. Right now, you can get second to die. This is shows you how far out. So these fares are legitimate. Second to die, actually, we actually issue it at age 94. Oh my. Think about that. That's not the maturity date. That, Ken, that's, that's the issue that's date. That's the issue date. And I heard a rumor, and I'm not going to say who this is just in case it turns out to be wrong. I hear that there's going to be a carrier who's going to issue age 95, 95, male, female, standard across the board on second to die. I'm telling you, when I came in this business 30 years ago, I mean, 95 was the maturity date. Yeah. So when we talk about clients having fear, I mean, the, the heads up, the insurance carriers are already out there in these numbers. We talk about live long and prosper. We are out there. I mean, we're out there. So, Ken, talk about it because this is a phobia, a real fear. And by the way, it's legit now. I just oh, gave, you, I just gave you some legitimate. actuarial issues here. Yep, yep. Well, basically, 
think about people during their, their, their cycle of life. They get to retirement. They're no, no longer bringing in income. They're no mm -hmm. longer working. Uh, they're totally dependent on their assets. And so the, the old uh, farmer's analogy of not using your seed corn, well, every farmer knows that you can only eat you know, your, your harvest and you have to leave the seed left to plant the crop mm -hmm. for next year, right? Well, <clears throat> investments in CDs, money markets, bonds, stocks, whatever the clients have, that's their seed corn. And so they, they've learned to hang on to the core, mm -hmm. the corpus, and to give away their earnings. Well, gosh, now we have uh, CDs and money market funds for less than a half a percent. We all know that yeah, what's been happening in the stock market. So there's a lot of fear about uh, volatile markets. There's fear about living too long and running out of money. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and what's amazing to me sometimes is we sit there and almost laugh and we have to be serious, but you know, a client's got $20 million, you know, and, and they're, they're living off 100,000, 200,000 a year and they're afraid they're gonna run out of money. Well, mm -hmm. that just isn't gonna happen, okay? Even in, in the worst mm -hmm. of circumstances. So our role as financial advisors in helping people give, one of the first things we do is we take a look at their money and do what we do best is, you know, we do those financial projections. We look mm -hmm. at their retirement income, use real conservative uh, rates of return, conservative inflation rates where you have higher rates than you think you're gonna have. And you show the client that if you take this block of money and set it aside and do this, this takes care of your income for the mm -hmm. rest of your life. And, and then we're gonna set aside some money for you know, things that aren't paid by you know, uh, Medicare and put a half million or a million in a CD somewhere just in case. And then what drops out is frequently a whole bunch of extra money. And what do you do with it? Mm -hmm. Do you wanna give it to your kids? Do you wanna give it to the charity or do you wanna give it to the Internal Revenue Service? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that the Internal Revenue Service is not only last on everybody's list, but they don't. They want to run out of money before the IRS can even come in there and get it. And, and we said that in the prior segments, but let's make very clear to our listeners, what we're doing with planned charitable giving is maximizing the use of tax laws, mm -hmm. maximizing the use of leverage of life insurance and trusts, mm -hmm. and, and helping people uh, give more to charities mm -hmm or to give a whole bunch to charities mm -hmm. and take the sting out of it. You know, you give a hundred grand and maybe it costs mm -hmm. you really 30 or something like that. Right, I love this because we're really, actually what you just said is, is really what planning's all about. We're homogenizing the tax code, the leverage of insurance, and using trust because of the ownership issues to mitigate the taxation issues. So the, those three in, in sync, in concert together, can actually deliver some spectacular returns. Well, and, and I think, you know, we've talked about me bridging the gap between CPAs and uh, insurance agents, financial planners. You know, I came, I, I, we've got this formula. We've got gross income minus uh, expenses for our, our investments. And then we take that money minus taxes and what do we have left over is what you can actually live on. And then you, you could go a step further and take mm -hmm. inflation off that. And the net, net, net might be 4% of, of your assets to mm -hmm. live on. And uh, we know that generally the gross income may increase by taking more risk or maybe mm -hmm. you lose money. Well, what I like about guaranteed types of products and index products is that maybe I have a lower gross income, mm -hmm. okay? But now I've got some tax savings down here. Mm -hmm. So by the time I work through the formula, maybe lower gross income, but higher after tax income. Right. I've noticed that with many of the things, and by the way, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, uh, this would be derelict on my part, all the things I said that we're giving away are at www.brokersalliance.com forward slash charitable giving. Now, I'd, I'd like to add, Ken, and I have this, and boy, uh, I'm going to say to my producer now, remind me to do this and put this out there. I have a 1040 overlay by one of our carriers that is excellent. And what it does is it does exactly what Ken s says. It really manages the tax issues to free up more money because it is, as you said, Net spendable income is the name of the game. How I arrive there could be taxes, could be my income. It doesn't matter what it is, but at the end of the day, I'm looking for what do I really take home after inflation, after taxes, my return, everything, expenses to the fund. I wanna know what it all is. Well, one of the ways I explain to uh, my other peers in the industry of why they should learn the rules of tax mm -hmm. rules and stuff like that is, it's sort of like, do you ever meet that kid that would, was playing Parteezy and, and and, and he comes up and he does a move and you say, you can't do that. And he, he pulls out the box top and there's the rules. Uh -huh. Well, that actually, here, here's Parteesi, right? There, the, if you get two pieces on the board, you block your opponent from coming through. Mm -hmm. And I did that one time and they go, oh, you can't do that. And I said, yes, you can. Here are the rules right mm -hmm. there. Aren't we abiding by the rules? That's the Internal Revenue Code's that thick. 
We learn the rules so we have the advantage in playing the game, and that is to reduce taxes and help people build wealth and give more to charity and their kids. Well, Ken, I've known you over 20 years, <laughs> and, and if you're going to liken the tax code to part cheesy, okay, I'm just saying. Ken, I mean, that's the name of the game. Everybody in their area of forte, yours especially tax being taxes, once you've learned the moves on the checkerboard, right, and you know all the little, there's so much nuance to the code, just like it is in product development and everything else, We once you start to learn how to marry these technologies together, these two schools of thought, I mean, it is pretty huge. Well, and that's why I always came to you on the, the product side is, is you know, you learn the nuances and then you start thinking, well, how can I use this to the advantage of the client? And, and so that just is very appealing to me to be able to mm -hmm. find the right product for the right situation. If you think of the, the real definition of what a broker is, it's taking the right product and marrying it mm -hmm. to the right client. And, and there's so many different anomalies and nuances of different products and tax laws and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why we have so much fun together is we put these structures together and we work to help maximize mm -hmm. the, the life insurance or annuity benefits and reduce the taxes. It's, it's yeah, just Just it's on this, this one area, this 1040 overlay that's produced by one of our carriers, it is so excellent. I've said eight out of 10 times, I can actually improve the client's actual income just by going through the 1040 and it'll walk you through it. It's very easy and it's it's not a hard issue. Yeah. And it's really great. I'm gonna put that out there. My producer, hopefully she'll remind me of that, www.brokersalliance.com forward slash charitable giving. And I'm gonna put that 1040 overlay out there and add it to everything we're gonna put out there. You know, and that might be something that our listeners might do too. If they have relationships with CPAs or tax attorneys or mm -hmm. whatever, Pull it out, learn it a little bit, and then, you know, sit down and buy them lunch and say, hey, you might be interested in having a copy of this. Look what, what we can do with your expertise, mm -hmm. your tax knowledge mm -hmm. to help improve your client situation. That happens to overlap in the area that I am. And, and look at the, the kind of team mm -hmm. we can become with my product knowledge and your tax knowledge to benefit your clients. Make a friend out of a CPA so you can get some referrals out of it. I have to say, though, I'm a little stunned, Ken, and a little let down by your fraternity <laughs> of CPAs. They did not know. I, we've shown this 1040 to many, and they all get it, say, oh, yeah, you can do that. But they're not proactively doing it. See, they're just doing when I give them the box at the end of the year and they do my taxes, right? But now we're showing a little bit something here that they say, oh, this is a proactive way. And by the way, this could actually help them increase their own billable hours. Well, that's exactly right. And, and uh, what you have to do is help the CPAs come up with tax concepts and make it easy for them to bring the topic up and talk to the client so they will refer. That's their bailiwick is tax rules. I love that. Listen, you know, when we come back, I want to touch a little bit more on wealth replacement trusts for kids because I really don't want to short my kids, right? Right. But I still want to give. Right. And I want to know, is there a way to do both? And with the wealth replacement trust, I can do that. That's right. You're listening to the Business Insurance Zone, the talk show that focuses on insurance in your practice. You can email me at the show's email address, the biz at brokersalliance.com or just call 1-800-290-7226, extension 147. Ken and I will be right back after a word from one of our premier providers of guaranteed term and guaranteed UL, Legal and General America. Banner Life Insurance Company and its subsidiary, William Penn Life Insurance Company of New York, comprise the Legal and General America companies, part of the International Legal and General Group, one of the largest insurance companies in the world. Now Legal and General America is one of the top rated insurance companies in America, with one of the strongest financial balance sheet among its peers. Legal and General America is a major player in guaranteed term and guaranteed universal life and consistently ranks among the best carriers in almost every product spreadsheet. Legal and General America's product line of guaranteed universal life endows at the maturity date, while most carriers' cash values just zero out. You know the reputation of Banner? Now know the value of LGA, Legal and General America. The power to protect. The power to preserve the power to serve their policyholders. That's Legal and General America. Well, welcome back to the Business Insurance Zone. I'm Steve Savant, your host, insurance columnist, financial color commentator, and interviewer extraordinaire. Remember, before moving forward with anything on our show, especially this week and last week's show, always talk with your CPA, your tax attorney, and of course, your broker-dealer compliance department. Remember, you can call us toll-free, 1-800-290-7226, extension 147, for any of your questions or quotes 
our life insurance annuities, DI, LTC, and group pension plans. It's not what I know, it's who I know. And that's why I have Ken on my show. Ken Davis, CLU, CHFC, CFP, and CPA. We're talking about today and all this week in our series on charitable giving. If you want this series, including our 2010 study of high net worth philanthropy and our own charitable giving package and our new thing I'm adding to the show, our 1040 overlay by a carrier. Just hop out on our site. I mean, we're giving away a ton here. You betcha. It's Christmas. Indeed. It's It's holidays. <laughs> I feel benevolent, you know? I'm just giving everything we have away. Yeah. And that you can pick that all up on our landing page at www.brokersalliance.com forward slash charitable giving. Well, Ken, I want to be a giver, not a just a taker, right? So let's talk about this. You know, when we, we get back into this, we're always trying to look at different avenues, right, mm-hmm. of charitable giving. Now, I, I wanted to touch this just because I wanted to make sure. Um, I love my kids. I, I Sometimes I wonder if I love my grandkids more. That right? happens frequently with yeah. grandparents. So I want to get back, just touch real quick on wealth replacement trusts for kids or in my little ad, I want to add on my little grandkids. So talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get into the rest of this section. Well, we talked earlier uh, about the fact that clients are afraid to give because they're afraid mm-hmm. that their own personal net worth will go to the point where they can't, don't have enough money to live on. And so we talked about, you know, financial projections and stuff like that. One of the pieces of software that I've found very useful in that is Insmark, which has been in the insurance realm for years and years, has a wealthy and wise uh, product. And uh, what you can do is you can put the client's assets in information, conservative assumptions, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can start to show what happens to three different segments. The net worth of the client, okay, what's left to the Mm -hmm. kid, and if you're charitably inclined, what goes to the charity. And what's really interesting about this with wealth replacement trusts is if you layer where you choose to take assets to buy things, for instance, leave money in in IRAs and qualified plans, Mm -hmm. don't touch it, don't pay any taxes on it, but use that ultimately as the gifting source for when you pass away because it passes what? No income taxes to right. a charity and no estate taxes when you leave to the charity, right? So that's that's one of the most efficient places to make mm-hmm. your gifting when you pass and away. you could still get some income off this. Well, and, and if you ever wanted it, you can always go grab it, but it's there when you eventually pass. Mm-hmm. If they have other assets, they can take those assets, gift it to something like an irrevocable life insurance trust, but we call mm-hmm. it a wealth replacement trust, a WRT. And now the money's going into the WRT to buy mm-hmm. life insurance. Very efficient with a second to die. How easy is it to use this uh, software from Innsmark? Well, it takes it takes some time. You have to learn. Mm-hmm. And Got they, a good tutorial? They, they, they have good training. They have some excellent samples. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're an excellent company. They're, they're, they do some very sophisticated stuff and, and do it very well. They're, and you recommend it? Oh, yeah. I think it's a great product. And I've used it for years. Uh, you might have to spend some time learning how to do it, or you can find some other people uh, that are experienced in that, that that you can either you know pay them by the hour or share some commissions or something like that and and uh, help get that done. But boy, it makes the difference if suddenly the client understands they give mm-hmm. all this money away, they're still going to be okay, mm-hmm. and they're going to help the kids, and they're going to help the charity. I mean, the numbers, the, gra- uh-huh. the color graphs at the end are really Well, Ken, I hate to say this, but I think you just helped out Innsmark. <laughs> <laughs> this is a shameless plug for Innsmark. Uh, is Bob Ritter still the, the guy? I think he, he is. Was. I just right, went Bob. to a seminar about a year ago. Bob, Steve Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get a call from Steve Savant, and here's why. Because you, you just got a huge sign-off from one of our largest guests that we have on our show. Remember, this show pulled down in 2011 over 400,000 clicks. So just a little plug back there to you see go. if Innsmark wants to play. There so you thank go. you, Ken, for that. Oh, you play. betcha. But, but really, I love Innsmark, and a lot of these really help us get in the game and show, quantify what we're talking about. Real numbers, real stats, and we can kind of move it around and see what model produces the best rate of return. Well, one, one of the cool things about that is that it, it really plays to both the really highly technical CPA or attorney mm-hmm. and to our clients. It, it takes all this very complex data puts it mm-hmm. in some nice color charts. And, and that's what it's all about. 70% of the, the population is highly visual and they gather mm-hmm. information, make decisions. And with one or two pages of these beautiful color charts, you can make your sale. And then you have all this voluminous amount of numbers crunching and all that mm-hmm. stuff for the guys that want to get geeky on. You want to just test it and say, is this real? And, mm-hmm. and all the stuff and what are your assumptions? It's all there in one package. And so it takes care of both the analytical mind 
for the gatekeeper fiduciary types mm -hmm. of people as well as helping get the point across to the client and ultimately what I get excited about is isn't it cool that you can take care of the client their kids and have these huge potential gifts to charity mm -hmm. when it's all said and done and all we're doing is maximizing the code and product leverage I mean really what, what we we're talking about before is you can either give it to the Internal Revenue Service or give it to the charity and you can still be taking care of yourself and the kid in the meantime. Well now let's talk about a little bit of charitable giving at the age of 70 and a half because we run into the RMD issue and a lot of people are are actually in my view doing a little bit of financial heresy here because they're actually taking their RMD, paying their tax on it and then with, with a good heart just not really smart giving it to the charity. Yeah, and, and let me share with you something that I kind of uh, fell into. Uh, and this, I think, is, epitomizes what goes around, comes around. I, uh, I offered to help out with a charity on their finance committee and, and on their legacy planning, in other words, their planned giving committee. And I was just doing it because I like to do this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. right? And did I think, sure, I could get some business at some point? Of course. But I, I didn't go in with a mercenary attitude, mm -hmm. went in with a good heart show them that I was sincere about this thing and I think that's really critical. You have to have a passion for mm -hmm. this stuff or, or your insincerity comes through. So anyway, we're doing this thing. I put on a presentation on utilizing IRAs for passing it to the kids and or charity. So I, mm -hmm. I kind of mixed it up so I get a larger group coming to the uh, seminar. Well, out of that seminar, somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, I've done this before. I bought a second to die policy, left it to a, a charity. And uh, I'm being forced to take my RMDs, my required minimum distribution for 70 and a half this year. And they're forcing me to take 45 grand a year out and I wanna do something for the charity with a life policy. So he's thinking I'm just gonna run him an illustration, which of course I did. Uh, and we talked it through and decided on a 10 pay 40 grand a year, mm -hmm. 400,000 over 10 years and started with a base policy of a million with uh, the assumptions on the indexed life, it grew to about a million seven by the time their life mm -hmm. expectancy hit. And here's the kicker, here's the tax planning. There's one of these gaps we talk about between CPAs and insurance guys. Is we, I said, and he wanted to give to five charities. So I said, go out to your local uh, community foundation, which happens to be the Arizona Community Foundation here, but these foundations are all over the United mm -hmm. States in different areas, and they're local in, in nature, and give the money give 40 grand a year to the community foundation. They will then turn around and buy the life insurance policy on his life. And as he makes the gifts each year, guess what? He has taxation on the IRA coming mm -hmm. out, but then he has, in his case, enough uh, adjusted gross income to take the full $40,000 a year deduction. Mm -hmm. So they wash out the taxes, okay? He was so excited about that because he'd done it before, but hadn't done it in that way. And the cool thing about the community foundation is there's five charities, so we didn't have to go out and get five policies, right. go through f five legal departments, because all these charities mm -hmm. have a review committee to make sure that it's a it's a legitimate. So this acts as a central depository or a kind of a, a liaison between these different uh, charities. It's an administrative yeah. support, and and uh, the, we're going to talk about the resources of community foundation, how they work later on mm -hmm. in one of our other uh, shows this week. But uh, it was really cool, and, and it was good for me because I went and talked to them. I learned about it. I, I learned a whole bunch, and I got great support. They have their JDs, attorneys on staff, mm -hmm. and accountants, and they have legal documents. It's just, it was really cool. Mm -hmm. So we got this all done. He was excited. I was excited. It was really lots of fun. And uh, that's how uh, – and, and see, he had already earmarked this you know, uh, IRA for charity. Mm -hmm. So he, he didn't like the fact the government was forcing him to take it out and pay taxes on it. Right. So I showed him how to avoid the paying the taxes and get it right back in the hands of the charity. And who knows, maybe at a much higher rate. What if, instead of living the 20 years, they get in a car accident, God forbid, and they do it 15 years in? Well, there's a windfall to the charity. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of their forethought and planning, uh, what was a total tragedy had at least a, a silver lining of benefiting uh, the world. Well. When I'm looking at a tactic like this, I mean, there are people that are taking out, they're just, I mean, look at America. I mean, the, the block of people that are over 70 and a half right now yeah. that had qualified plans. Yeah. This is a natural market for our producers to really look at it in a totally different way, letting charity and benevolence actually drive the tax issues and, right? Yeah. Getting an income back out of this, I love it. Right. And the thing is, you still have the IRA. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, if, if you're taking that three or 4% RMD out and you're making five, six, seven, 10% on it, mm -hmm. it's, it, it can actually be growing and it's still there to support the client. 
And if they ever get to the point they need that money, they can turn it off. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, in, the, in this particular case, they just wanted a state of the RMD, but if somebody really doesn't think they need the money, gosh, wouldn't it be cool if you did a lifetime single premium immediate mm -hmm. annuity in the IRA mm -hmm. and you know doubled or tripled that distribution rate, taking out more than you need to, mm -hmm. okay, and then gifting it into charity. And normally we'd be reticent to do that because we're going to pay taxes on the IRA right. distribution. But now if we turn around and we do, in fact, get a deduction for it, mm -hmm. we can wash out potentially those taxes. Now, the real key, though, for the deduction is a, a large enough adjusted gross income to play the game. Well, that's right. And there are provisions that allow you to carry the deduction forward if you can't use it all in one year. Mm -hmm. But uh, absolutely, positively, mm -hmm. work with some projection software on your tax advisor, your attorney, or accountant. Or InSmart. Or it, it, you can, yeah, yeah, you can do that, but I mean, I, I still think uh, Insmark isn't going to test your AGI limits. So that mm -hmm. that that isn't going to be done. They're sure. going to assume rates of return. So you really need a tax projection software or an advisor mm -hmm. to help guide you. Because there's mm -hmm. other little nuances and rules you don't want to get into trouble. But it it's not a big deal. Just bring somebody in and you can get there. Ken, day three, we're heading for day four. You can watch this show tomorrow, show Friday on beautiful HD 1080p right on our home site. Just click on the red button at www.brokersalliance.com right on our homepage, easy to find, and on all our social networks, YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, LinkedIn, and of course where I play a lot, Twitter. I'm Steve Savant. You've been listening to the Business Insurance Zone. That's the buzz on the biz for today. Get in the zone, the Business Insurance Zone. The Business Insurance Zone dedicated to financial professionals who use insurance in their practice.